Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, I thought I'd answer a question that's been asked a number of times by people in my comments. I often show when I'm doing my ink stuff, I show a chromatography that I do of it. And they've been asking, how do I do it? So I thought what we'd do today is I'd explain why I do the chromatography and actually show you how I do one. Now, the way I do this may not be the perfect way to do it. It may not be the way you do it. One of the things I'd like from this is if you can give me some guidance. You know, I want to improve how I'm doing things. You've got to start somewhere, which is what I've done. And then you learn and you get advice and you improve things. So please think about that as we're going through the video. Join me now down on the table and we'll jump straight in and look at some chromatography. So here we are with the demo set up. You get to see a little bit of the messiness of my desk around this. Not sure how well this will come out, but hopefully you'll be able to see what we're going to do. So here's my swatch card that we're going to be doing the chromatography for. This is Dimine Soft Mint. Here we've got the bottle. What I've got to use with this is I've got a tumbler here. In there, I've got some cold water. So it's what about maybe a centimetre of cold water in the bottom. I've got my serendipity dip pen. That's what I'm going to use to actually draw the line. And then I've got my chromatography paper. So let's take this out. I got this chromatography paper from Amazon. It was really cheap. It was something like, I don't know, maybe about 300 sheets. I've used one box and this is on now to the second box. So here's my chromatography paper. The first thing I do on the top is I write the name of the ink. I always do this in pencil. So it's Diamine Soft Mint. So there we've got that written down. So here's my ink, Soft Mint. What I'm going to do is take the Serendipity pen Dip that in. Doesn't need to have a lot on it. Then I'm going to draw a line about half a centimetre to a centimetre up that paper. So I've drawn that line. On the side, I've got my timer ready. So let's fetch in the cup and we can see this. Hopefully I can get this angled right. What I do is I dip the paper into just below the line and then I try and hold it there and I do that for 15 seconds. So my time is going down now. You see the ink slowly creeping up. So that's a 15 seconds complete. So I just take it out, give it a little shake. And then what I do here, this is, I can't remember what I got this from, but it's A5 size. It's got a shiny side. So I just lay it on there, pop the top back on the ink. And then I'll leave that to dry. Normally 10 to 15 minutes seems to be about enough. So we'll come back and take a look once it's had time to dry. So I've left that strip overnight to dry. Here it comes in. So here's a swatch and here's that chromatography strip. As you can see, there's not a lot of difference in terms of colour. So we've got the same real consistent colour all the way through. Yes, here at the bottom, that's fairly light, but then we start seeing what I think is the same colour as I see in the swatch. So when I look at this one, it just tells me there's that one colour in. I'm going to fetch in another strip. Here we've got Robert Oster Tranquility. This is one of my favourite inks. It's like a teeny colour. Now, if I look over here where I've got the chromatography strip, we can see we've got grey coming in at the bottom. So as the water's going up, it's separating the colours out and the colours travel a different distance of that paper. So we've got grey, which is very much a background colour. Then we come into a nice bright green. But then we've got some blue. And I see at the top of this strip, the tiniest line of like a red colour. And that all goes together to give us Robert Oster tranquility. Again, you know, it's, it's nice. It shows us something but it's not overly complex, is it? Let's look at a different one. 
This is Herban Terre de Fouet. So this is a, well, it's a brown type color. If we look over on the back here, we've got a very dark gray line at the bottom. And that quickly comes into this paler gray as it's going up. Then we go into like a pale pink, then into maybe like a peachy type color, and then into some bright pinks. That gray line at the bottom, hopefully that means there's a little bit of waterproof in there. I've not tested it, so I don't know. It's maybe something I need to test in the future. But again, there's not a lot in there, is there? It's just gray and then pinks, and you know, there'll be a little bit of yellow. And again, all together, that goes to make this color. We'll take a final look at one more. This is Dominant Industry Winterwood. Very dark brown color. Hopefully you can see that. What I'm gonna do is turn this over. This then reveals this really complicated chromatography. And this is one of the things I like to see. I mean, to be honest, with the chromatography, I don't know what half of it means, but I just enjoy seeing how it works. And I just enjoy seeing the different colors that go into making up an ink. So again, we've got down to the bottom, we've got a gray, but it's more of a purpley type gray. Then we've got a pale gray. We go into a dark purple, pink, yellows, greens. And then at the top here, we've got this gorgeous blue color. So this is one of the ones I quite enjoy looking at this because there's a lot of complexity to it. And so that goes into giving me winter wood. So I'll just fetch in all of these so we can have a quick look at all of them together. So here we've got the four chromatography strips we've looked at. You know, we can see there's a couple of simple ones, one getting there in the middle and one fairly complex one. As I've already said, I mainly do this for interest. I really, I just don't know what the chromatography scripts are actually telling me in a scientific manner. I just think they look nice and it's a way to just to further understand a little bit what's going on with my inks. So short video today. I thought I'd just drop this in so I can answer a question that's been asked by someone. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Have you got some tips that you could give me on how to improve what I'm doing when I'm creating that chromatography? Is this kickstarting you to go and start doing chromatography yourself? Please drop a comment down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like. Every time you comment just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.